Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's great to see you guys back again so soon. Make sure you subscribe and get notified so when I put up new videos, you'll be the first to see them. Uh, today what I want to do is I went through the vinyl collection, the CD collection, and we're going to go over today. I'm going to rank from 1 to 10, 10 being the best obviously, uh, the double live albums in my collection. Uh, double live albums are like, you know, an institution to me. I just have so many in my collection. It's crazy. I have single, uh, one record live albums and CDs as well, but today we're focusing on double live albums. So we're talking about, you know, which ones are the staples I'm talking about. We're talking about kiss alive, one kiss alive Two, all the rush live albums. Uh, we're talking iron maiden, Judas priest. We're talking black Sabbath. We're talking Ozzy Osbourne, all my favorites. And uh, I'll give you my, I haven't even prepared this. This is, this is going to be off the top of my head. This might be insane what I'm about to do to um, rank these one to 10. Uh, let's see what a sucker I am. And I can't, and you know, just giving too much love to all these releases. But all right, let's get started. Let's start with these rankings. Uh, double live albums in my collection. First one here, Black Sabbath, Live Evil, uh, 1982. Ronnie James Dio on vocals. Um, very controversial live album and the fact that it features Ronnie James Dio singing a lot of the um, Ozzy Osbourne uh, Black Sabbath tunes. But uh, also his songs with Black Sabbath are unbelievable on this. And the uh, this is from the box set that came out recently. And this is the, uh, the, the remixed version of this that, uh, Wynn Davis, uh, remixed this sounds ridiculous. It sounds so good. It's unbelievable. You got to check this out. If you don't have that remix, you got to get it. Listen to it on Spotify. It's so good. Um, that being said, I guess I have to, um, man, this is, I I'm going to give it a 10. I got to, I got to give this a 10. I've been listening to this since I was 10 years old. And, uh, you know, I've been listening to this for 30 years, man. I mean, it's crazy. And uh, it's a must-have in my collection for sure. Uh, next up, just got this one recently. Showed you on my last video, the uh, Judas Priest live album that came out in 1987 on the uh, Turbo uh, album tour. Um, it's got a lot of good songs on it. I mean, I like the fact that it has, like, the Turbo stuff, that it has Turbo Lover, Parental Guidance. Um, private property uh it's got a lot of that stuff on it, actually but um it's got metal gods breaking the law um electric eye you got another thing coming i mean it's got like it's kind of like a greatest hits live which i like about that uh, i've only had a chance to listen to it one time uh didn't have this as, as a kid growing up um but i just thought you know i got it for a good price i thought i'd pick it up uh, just so just on the one listen I have, I'm going to give it a, uh, I'll give it a, uh, six and a half, uh, just because, uh, if I'm going to grab a Judas Priest live album, it's probably going to be, uh, unleashed in the East, but that's a single record, not a double album. So that doesn't count in this video, but I'll give this a solid six and a half. I think it's good. Good production. Next up. Another one I've had been listening to since I was a kid, uh, had it on cassette, had it on CD. Now I got it on vinyl is, uh, Ozzy Osbourne speak of the devil, uh, released in 1982. Yes. 1982, uh, just on the heels of the, the death of, uh, Randy Rhodes. Uh, this features Brad Gillis from night Ranger on guitar and uh, man, do I love it. I mean, I, I really love his playing and I, I love Rudy Sarzo and Tommy Aldridge uh, their take on the Black Sabbath material, because this live album is all, uh, Ozzy's material with Black Sabbath. So, uh, no Ozzy solo stuff on this album, but great to hear these like young, passionate musicians really tackling the Black Sabbath stuff. And it sounds killer. The production, I believe it's from Max Norman is unbelievable. It sounds awesome on a turntable on vinyl. It's great. I'm going to go ahead and this one's been in my collection for years and years and years. I'm never, it's never let me down. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it an eight and a half. I'm going to go eight and a half on this one for sure. Next one, another Ozzy. 
is uh, the tribute album, Ozzy Osbourne, Randy Rhodes. So this came out in 1987, but was actually taken from a 1981 concert, I believe. Um, and it sounds fantastic. Um, you know, I, for me, I, I rather listen to the studio versions of these songs because it's just songs from the first two Ozzy albums, Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a Madman. Um, and honestly, I'd, I'd probably rather listen to the studio versions, but I like the energy on this. It's crazy. And Randy's playing is great to have a document of his live work playing because it really is second to none. Uh, so I'll give this, uh, you know, again, one that I've, you know, listened to since I was a kid. I'll, I'm going to give it a, uh, I'll give it a seven and a half, seven and a half on uh, tribute. Next up. Rainbow on stage. 1977, Richie Blackmore, Cozy Powell on drums, Ronnie James Dio on vocals. That lineup alone, you can't go wrong. I don't care what you they put on here. It's going to be good. It doesn't matter. Um, but awesome songs on here. Uh, Kill the King, Man on the Silver Mountain. Uh, I love that they do a Deep Purple track. They do Mistreated. Uh, with Ronnie James Dio on vocals. Catch the Rainbow on here is so... Un just for that song alone, just for Catch the Rainbow on this, I'm going to give it a 9. I'm going to give it a 9. Uh, and I'm being... I should give it a 10, but I'm going to give it a 9 because, or else I'm going to give everything a 10. So uh, Rainbow on stage, I'll give it a 9. Essential blueprint to heavy metal hard rock right there. Next up, uh, an album that is, uh, you know, another blueprint of uh, hard rock and heavy metal of the you know, bands that came out in the 80s and 90s is uh, UFO, Strangers in the Night. UFO, uh, famous for Michael Shanker on guitar. And this is a 1979 solo album uh, produced by Ron Nevison. Um, and this is the uh, 180 gram uh, remastered version here. But, uh, Awesome songs on here. Lights Out, Rock Bottom, Shoot Shoot. Um, I know I'm missing some. Doctor Doctor, Only You Can Rock. I mean, there's so many good songs on here. The performance is great. The production is great. Everything on here is a must-have double live album. So I'll, I'll, I'll give this a... Uh, I'm going to give it an 8. I'm going to give this one an 8. Uh, another one. Had this when it came out as a kid. Big time CD in the 90s. I think every kid in junior high, high school had ACDC Live uh, on the heels of their um, uh, Razor's Edge album that was huge. You know, it had Thunderstruck and Money Talks and all that stuff. So this is the live version. I believe this was recorded in like Donington, England or something like that. But uh, you can see there the big stage show. And a lot of cool songs in here. I like that it's, you know, it kind of gives you a bit of everything. You get the Brian Johnson stuff. You get the Back in Black stuff. But also, they, they do a lot of cool um, Bon Scott era stuff. They do uh, High Voltage, Let There Be Rock, TNT, Sin City, which I thought was really cool. Uh, Jailbreak, The Jack, Dirty Deeds. A lot, a lot of old school stuff on here. And uh, produced by Bruce Fairburn. So you know it's going to be, I think, uh, mixed by... Mike Frazier and anything mixed by Mike Frazier is top notch and it's going to sound fantastic. And it's going to sound like you are there at the concert. So, uh, I like this one. Uh, I don't play it too often. So I'm going to give it a, I'll give this one again, six and a half, six and a half to ACDC live. Uh, next one up is Friday music, audio file pressing deep purple made in Japan. Uh, 1972, I believe. This is the Ian Gillen, Richie Blackmore, John Lord, Ian Pace, Roger Glover lineup. The classic lineup of Deep Purple. And they're doing all the classic songs here. Uh, Space Truckin', Highway Star, Smoke on the Water, Child in Time is really cool on here. And uh, the production is great. It just it holds up so well to this day that this is like a 50-year-old recording. And uh, the, the drums and everything just sounds right in your face and sounds really good. So... Um, I'll give this one a, uh, I'm going to give this one a seven, seven for uh made in Japan. Check that one out for sure. Uh, one that I didn't have when I was a kid, um, didn't discover till, till later on. I mean, obviously I know all these songs. I had the studio versions I listened to as a kid, but, uh, journeys live album, double live album captured from 1980, 81, I believe. Yeah. Um, 
is, is really good. The production is stellar. The drums, everything just hitting hard. You know, it's a little more hard hitting than the studio albums. Uh, so that's cool. And it's, uh, I think the, the last, uh, album that Greg Raleigh, uh, on keyboards appears on, he was then replaced by Jonathan Kane. So it's good to have him on here, uh, and his singing because he sings on, uh, obviously feeling that way anytime. Uh, and then it says the, um, the studio track, the last song on here, uh, the party's over hopelessly in love. You guys know, if you haven't heard that song, look it up on Spotify. Awesome, awesome journey song. Love that. And it's cool that they included it on here. And uh, good album. I'm going to give this, uh, I'll give it a six. I'll give the journey captured a six. Obviously, uh, no double live video, double live album video would be complete without Kiss Alive, their first live album. This is the uh, reissue here. Um, I mean, what can I say about it? Is the to me, it's probably the quintessential uh, double live album. Kind of created the genre, to be honest. Uh, once this came out and this started selling millions of copies, then everybody had to start putting out uh, double live albums. Um, whether it was Peter Frampton, Ted Nugent, Aerosmith, even you know, the Rolling Stones, everyone started putting out double live albums after this became a huge hit. So Kiss Alive, it's got all the great songs from the first three albums. And this is one, uh, unlike the Ozzy one I was talking about, where I'd rather listen to the studio versions, I'd probably rather listen to the first three uh, so songs from the first three Kiss albums I'd rather hear on this than the studio album. So uh, I got to give it a 10. I'm sorry. I got to give Kiss Alive a 10. As well as... The next one they put out just a few short years later was Kiss Alive 2. Uh, three sides being live, one side being studio track. So uh, I'll take some liberties on that one. But, uh, I mean, how iconic is that? Look at that. I mean, I've had this on every... I've owned this on every uh, format possible. As a kid, it was in the house on 8-track, multiple, multiple times on cassette, multiple times on CD. It's still in the CD collection. I still got it on eight track up there. I still got it on vinyl. So, and I got a DVD of the concert. I got all bases covered if this is what I want to listen to. So again, another blueprint of hard rock and heavy metal right here. Uh, any kid that started a band that became famous in the, uh, you know, eighties, nineties, they will say that this is a seminal album. Again, I got to give it a 10, got to give it a 10. Like I said, on the heels of those albums being popular, you got Ted Nugent coming out with Double Live Gonzo. And uh, this is the classic lineup that features uh, Derek St. Holmes on guitar and vocals. Um, and uh, this is, you know, this is the classic lineup. And this is really, for me, all I need from Ted Nugent. I like the first album. Uh, I like to have the first album on vinyl. Um but other than that, I mean, this is really all I need from Ted Nugent. It's got Stranglehold, Cat Scratch Fever, Storm Trooping, just what the doctor ordered. Um, doesn't have uh, Hey Baby on it. So that's the one. That's why I like to have, uh, I do have a Greatest Hits from Ted Nugent. But uh, this is, is you know, just a kick-ass, kick-ass live album. I'm going to have to give this a, uh, I'm going to give it a seven and a half because it is very, uh, very important to double live record. Next, um, 1976, Rush, All the World's a Stage, uh, their first live album here, and really set the tone for all their live albums. I mean, this was such a hit, and people loved it so much. They like every three years, was it every three or four albums, Rush would do a, a live album. And uh, this one's cool, so it's right on, you know, after 2112, so it's got all the, you know, Great songs from the first album, Fly By Night, Caress of Steel, 2112, um, all on this this album here. And it's awesome. I mean, it's heavy. Again, it's one of these ones where it really takes those st those songs out, those first four studio albums, and really like raises the kind of ballsiness and heaviness because it's, it's a live recording. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this a, uh, I'll give it a seven, Rush All the World's a Stage. The next one, you'll see my taste, my Rush taste. Well, you'll see it in the ranking of these albums. Next one that Rush did in 1981, Exit Stage Left, uh, came out on the Moving Pictures Tour. Um, so you have Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, 
limelight uh, all, all on this um, live album. Or am I wrong? No, limelight. They did not do limelight live on this one. Um, but it has uh, stuff from Permanent Waves, Free Will, um, Spirit of Radio. Uh, it's got the trees on here, a great version of the trees, great version of Jacob's Ladder. Uh, uh, Passage to Bangkok is awesome on here. YYZ is really, really awesome on this. Uh, this is worth the money. Whatever you have to pay for this, it's worth the money. Um, and I'm going to give this one, uh, oof, I got to give this, uh, I'm going to give it an 8.5. 8.5. So we see we're raising the bar. Rush is getting better and better. And I have a framed copy right here. You guys can't see because it's right above me here. But I keep a framed uh, promo kind of poster of it up here. Of this one, Show of Hands, 1989, I believe. Uh, live album from Rush. And this sort of covers the more the uh, 80s era of Rush. So those albums being, you know, uh, Signals, Grace Under Pressure, Power Windows, Hold Your Fire. And then this live album comes out with a whole, you know, cross section of that material. But again, really cool stuff on here. Uh, subdivisions on here is great. Manhattan Project, Mission, uh, Force 10, Mystic Rhythms. Uh, Neil Peart's drum solo on here is just so cool. Uh, another one I've had since I was a kid. And I've had it on all formats and will always have it in my collection. I got to give it a 10. I got to give it a 10. I'm sorry. I, I love it. <laughs> you gotta get check it out, man. Uh, next, Thin Lizzy, Live and Dangerous again, uh, on the heels of you know Kiss having such success with the double live albums that I think Thin Lizzy took to, that to heart and put out their double live album in 1978. And um, a lot of people's a controversial uh, live album, much like in the vein of Kiss Alive, where uh, a lot of it was redone in the studio. Um, so is it really a live album? No, but you know, we got to suspend disbelief uh, in, in these, uh, the era of this, you know, this stuff. So, but it's got great, great songs on here. Uh, jailbreak, Emerald, Southbound, Massacre, Dancing in the Moonlight. Obviously boys are back in town. Cowboy song. The rocker is unbelievable. Uh, this is a great one, man. I'm going to give it a, uh, I'll give it a six and a half. Cause like I said, it's, uh, a lot of it was done in the studio, um, but I do still like it. Uh, another recent one I got on vinyl, but I've always had had it since the day it came out. Had it on every format, still do. Uh, Van Halen Live right here, right now. Came out in 1993 uh, from the Four Unlawful Carnal Knowledge Tour. And it's just so cool, man. I mean, this is just such a awesome, awesome live album with Sammy Hagar. Um, this, uh, it was produced by Andy Johns, uh, who's worked with Led Zeppelin and it was just such a awesome, uh, producer and made everything. The drums on here just sound amazing. And the guitars, it's really Van Halen at its peak as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but it has really, you know, great songs like pound cake, when it's love, um, man on a mission dreams, but also has, uh, Sammy Hagar's take on the uh, Roth material too. They do Panama, uh, they do Jump, and they also do uh, One Way to Rock, I believe. Yeah, One Way to Rock from Sammy Hagar solo stuff. So kind of runs the gamut here, a little bit of everything, but it's really an awesome live album. Again, from what I've read over the years that it's not, uh, I think it was replayed in the studio, and I think that Sammy Hagar in his book says that he, um, had to redo the vocals for some reason, something was wrong. And he just went in the studio, hooked the mic in right to the board, sang the entire album in one take. And that's what you hear on this album is him. Just, he went back to the studio and redid the vocals. So it is what it is. But I'm going to give this one a, uh, I'm going to give it a nine. Cause I listen to it a lot. Uh, last vinyl one I have here. Uh, you know, we sh we've had a lot of hard rock metal in the mix here, so I wanted to kind of just mix it up a little bit. It does count. Double live album, The Jackson's Live. I've talked about this on my channel many times. Just an awesome, awesome live album. Um, that, uh, they 
that the Jacksons went on tour after the uh, 1980 Triumph album, which I've said on this channel is a must-have album. Go listen to Triumph. It's like a free off the wall. Okay, so you have 10 more songs that sound just like off the wall and kind of like Thriller. Um, but a lot of the off the wall tracks are featured on here. Uh, and they sound great with the, with the Jackson uh, brothers, uh, doing their harmonies on the stuff. And the band is just outstanding on here. Uh, the tempos are raised a little bit and, uh, I can see here, I just saw this mixed by Bill Schnee, who's one of the, like most sought after audiophile, you know, uh, mixers and producers of all time. So no wonder why I like it so much. And this is a promo copy. I didn't even realize that. So check this one out if you get a chance. Now, just some honorable mentions I wanted to show that I haven't gotten on vinyl yet, but I do have on CD. Uh, I'm just waiting to find the right price. You know what I mean? Uh, Eric Clapton, 24 Nights, came out in 1990. Uh, this is sort of my favorite era of, of Eric Clapton, uh, his solo career, uh, with, with uh, Nathan East on bass, Greg Fillin Gaines on keyboards, who I, actually, uh, I absolutely love his work. Uh, but... Very cool stuff on here from the Journeyman album. So you have Running on Faith, uh, Old Love. Uh, but you also have, um, you know, classic stuff. He does Sunshine of Your Love on here, Badge, White Room. Uh, and, and recently, they, uh, if you go on Spotify, you can get it, and you can get it on vinyl and CD. Is uh, They put out a whole um, expanded version of this where it's like way, like twice as many more songs and there's a whole like uh, symphonic version of it. And so check that out if you get a chance. But 24 Nights, I really love. This is my favorite Clapton Live uh, album. I'm going to give it a seven. I'll give it a seven. Iron Maiden, Live After Death. Uh, you know, just probably one of the greatest live albums ever made, if not the 80s for sure. Uh, this is a just powerful performance from the band on the... Um, Power Slave Tour, which I did see. It was my first concert when I was five years old. And uh, very cool. But uh, definitely check that one out. I got to give this an 8.5. Got to give it an 8.5. It's unbelievable. Uh, another one, Frampton Comes Alive. Everybody knows. Uh, great double live album. You see it everywhere. It's iconic. Um, I don't play it that much. I do respect it. I own it, obviously. Uh, but I'll give it a... I'll give it a six. Um, just I uh, don't listen to it that often. Another one I wanted to point out was um, obviously Led Zeppelin's Song Remains the Same is a huge double live album, and it's iconic and classic. I tend to lean to this one more, though, this How the West Was Won uh, CD compilation, not uh, a, a live set from the L.A. Forum, I believe. And uh, this was uh, remixed by... Uh, Kevin Shirley, I believe, and Jimmy Page, and it the way they remix this sounds like you're in, you're there, and uh, it's just they use all their production and mixing and skills to make it just so punchy and sounds like it was made two days ago, not fifty years ago. So I uh, definitely recommend that one there. So pick that one up. And there you have it. I ranked. Oh, I'll, what do I rank this? I'll give this a. Uh, I'll give a seven and a half on that one. So. There you go. Call me crazy. But I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, make a little list there of the ones I showed. I'd love to hear your ranking on those. If you think I'm crazy, let me know too. If you think I'm on the ball, let me know that too. But uh, again, subscribe to this channel. I appreciate all you guys. Keep the messages coming on social media and get notified. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. See you later.